So I'm about to take to the air here at Goodwood for a choreographed dogfight with um, Spitfires and a Major Smith. Now, there's no way I can possibly comprehend what it's like to be in an actual dogfight. And um, with that in mind, I thought I'd, rather than try, I'd, I'd read just a few words from, from this book, a book by a guy called Geoffrey Wellham. Who, was a, who died a couple of years ago. I had good fortune to meet Geoffrey. He's a lovely, very kind man. And um, he was a very good writer. And he wrote about his experiences in the Battle of Britain. He was a Battle of Britain pilot. And I think this sums up how those pilots must have felt every morning, more so than I could ever do. One after the other, Spitfires are starting up. The fitters warm up the engines, 12 Merlins at 1,200 revs or thereabouts. The power of the moment is awe-inspiring. The still morning air reverberates with the sound of harnessed energy. Slip streams flatten the grass behind the quivering aircraft. In a way, it's exciting, it's wonderful, and not without a certain beauty. It's also tragic. Which one of us is going to be killed in this day? Morning, everyone. Morning. Very excited about this today. Um, so listen, I've been I've I've been so lucky. I've been up a couple of times, mostly with you, Matt. And um, but this is going to be something different today, right? We're going to shoot John down today. Which we've never done before. <laughs> is that on your bucket list? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so explain to me what we're doing today and and, uh, and how it's going to work. We're doing um, a mixture of things, Dermot. It's going to start off with formation takeoff. So. The Mark 1s are getting airborne and then you're getting airborne with them. So yeah. it'll be three Spitfires getting airborne together. I'll then bounce you basically when you're into that. So there'll be a time when you see the 109 flash by, just as it would have done. And then it's it's appeal into that, as if we were then going into combat. It's going to be quite, it should be quite dramatic. And in, in terms of the, what the pilots would have gone through during the Battle of Britain and afterwards, what, what strikes me when, when you know read the first hand accounts is just the utter chaos and then this chaos through to tranquility. Like if you read Tom Neal's book and then suddenly he finds, he looks up and finally, suddenly he's in the middle of nowhere. Everybody's and, gone. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... I think it used to happen a lot and it, certainly with some of the guys, uh, you read some of the Germans' accounts as well, when they would get into hard combat and they would flick out of the manoeuvre because they've they're pulling so hard, the aircraft would flick and descend and drop away from the fight. When they climbed back up, everyone's gone. So, it, and that happened quite often, I think. So, you should yeah. look at a, a, a kind of a, a modicum of, of what they would have gone through in, in, in yeah, the... Yeah, just a sense of it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Wow. But you, you'll certainly get a sense of the dy dynamism. You know, we're, we're doing everything we can so that we don't risk our lives doing this, yeah. obviously, which is what they face every day. But in terms of what the aeroplanes are capable of and what they might have seen, certainly you'll get, you know, 75, 80% of that. All right, well, that's... I get it, sort of. What do we do now? I think we go flying. All right, yeah. wonderful. Great stuff. Yeah, really Let's good. To... Thanks, John. Cheers, guys. The big raid came when we were all having lunch in the mess. And suddenly, the tannoy went absolutely mad. 616 Squadron Scramble. 616 Squadron Scramble. Oh, you sprinted, got to your aircraft as quickly as possible. There's no doubt about that. You had to run. When the call to action came, air crews and the pilots had no time to waste. Every second counted in the quest to intercept the German aircraft as they headed towards their target. From their air bases, Allied pilots would cover large sections of the coastline. Once airborne, they sometimes never made contact with the enemy. With brilliant daring, these young men, many of them in their teens, more often than not hopelessly outnumbered by the enemy, went up from scores of aerodromes to fight a ruthless foe who came day after day and night after night to kill, murder and wantonly destroy. Every hour of every day, our gallant airmen were turning the tide of war by their skill, courage and devotion to duty. Ready. 
you'll just get old of what these guys went through. When you read the pilot's testimony, they all enjoyed flying it in battle, in close battle, just as an aircraft can fly so much. It feels, dare I say it, almost sedate if you're flying around this in the air. You just get the feeling, I suppose it must have been like to just be up flying, being quite serene. And that's the thing that strikes me, is the change and the difference between the serenity, suddenly your, your, your action takes over and all hell breaks loose. We were jumped by some 109s out of the sun. The first we knew about it was a front and shake. Break, break, break. Which meant you didn't sit around arguing, you just broke. Dog fighting was chaos. Occasionally you chase something, fighters against fighters. But the actual dog fight itself, something flashed across the gun sight. You fired your gun and hoped you'd hit. Oh, look at that. Wow. The intense manoeuvres that took place in dogfights put incredible pressures on the pilots' bodies, and it took all my strength and focus not to feel too dizzy. How do you feel? Do I have a quiet bike burn? No, OK. Yeah, I mean, that's incredible. I got it. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, that was awesome. Awesome. It was awe inspiring as well. The appreciation you have for these guys, just the, the attention to detail, the fact they're up there, what it does to their bodies, what it does to their minds, the fact they have to then fly the aircraft and then, without even getting into the fact that they're either trying to shoot someone down or stop themselves getting shot down. And you're up there and we saw the 109 and the, spit, and the other Spitfire. And when you're on the ground, you can tell that's a 109 and that's a Spitfire. But when you're up there, no idea. And asking these 19-year-old kids who've had minimal training to just identify the aircraft, let alone shoot them down. Wow. That was awesome, Matt. That was great fun, wasn't it? Thank you. Well done. No, sick bag still in the uh, in the bucket. Sick bag number two is. <laughs>